Alrighty. A good so, um, my name is Eric Bjork, and I'm from uh, the Gage Corporation. And today, I'm going to talk about our our belts that we provide in kit of parts, and also that we give out for free um, for for you guys to use with the robots. So, um, just a quick introduction: Who is Gates? Uh, we make a lot of industrial rubber equipment, so anything from automotive to industrial belts, and also we get into hydraulic, industrial, and engine hose. Um, we just celebrated our 100-year anniversary as a company, so that was a pretty big deal for us. We're based out of Denver. That's where I came from, so we've been in Denver for over 100 years. Um, so that's, that's a pretty big milestone just because there's not a lot of companies that, that can say that they're 100 years old. So um, quickly, I'm going to just cover this power transmission besides our synchronous belts. Um, another big industry for us is V-belts. Um, so a V-belt is something you find in a car um, or like a fan drive or something. And they're just, uh, just you know, triangle rubber belts with pestle cords in the middle. And they use friction um, to transmit the loads besides timing belts which use, um, you know, the teeth. And again, applications were basically in anything that moves, uh, you can put a belt drive on. So um, kind of like chain. I mean, we're we're on bicycles now and motorcycles, uh, um, as well as everything you see here from oil fields to to windmills. So um, getting on to synchronous belts. Um, synchronous belts. They're also known as timing belts, and that's what. Um, we're trying to get people to use on the robots. Um, they use positive engagement between teeth and sprocket grooves, different from the V-belts, which use uh, which use friction, um, and very similar to chain. There's no slip um, and minimal heat buildup, and it just creates a synchronized motion between your your driver and your driven shafts uh, for preci precision um, and also fast response times. And also another big deal is why we think it's good for robots is they're really lightweight. And I'll uh, go on that topic a little bit later. So with timing belts, there's, there's lots of different tooth profiles and they all, all have their advantages and disadvantages. The ones that we give out in the, the kit of parts is the HTD profile, which you see in the middle here. It's just a nice round tooth shape. So, yep. Yeah, so um, basically the one you see on the left, the timing, that was uh, an early on profile for belts. Um, that was, I mean, that one dates back probably 50 years or so. So those are still used in a lot of older equipment, um, and we still sell them and make them, but it's not a, a very common belt now we use with new applications. Uh, the HTD is the most universal, so most companies make an HTD belt and pulley. So you know, whether you go to Gates or you go to Goodyear or anyone else that makes them, you can find the HTD belts. And then the GT2 on the right, that's uh, a Gates specific profile that we're basically the only ones that make them. So it's a little more proprietary and we can do, we do a lot more things with that besides just normal um, rubber belts. We do a lot of polyurethane belts and a lot of other custom applications. Um, so again, applications that we put our belts on motorcycles. You can find our belts on Harley Davidsons. Um, they're in blower belts. Tony Schumacher only uses Gates belts to run his blower. Um, and then, like I said, we just got into the bicycle market about three years ago, and we're right now we're on about 50 different brands of bicycles, and I'm not sure how many um, types, but they are everywhere if you look for them. And there's a picture of our polychain belt that's on Tony Schumacher's race car, which is pretty cool. Pulls a lot of a lot of horsepower, probably over a thousand horsepower. 
So um, just to talk a little bit about Chain. There's Chain that comes in the kit of parts, and Chain is is great for a lot of situations. Um, you know, for advantages, it's any length is possible. So that's the one thing that belts can't do because they're continuous. So you can break a chain of parts and put it together. And if you want to go longer or shorter, you just take a few links out or put a few back in and put them back together. And it's really simple. Um, so easy installation. And you basically don't need any tension with chain, uh, which is another big advantage because um, with belts you do. Um, disadvantages, you need to lubricate them. You need to maintain them. Uh, that can cause for a messy environment depending on where it's going and how long it's been running for. Um, there's a little backlash, reduced backlash, and that means the response time. So once you start the drive, it, it might move a little bit before it actually engages. Um, and they are typically metal parts, so they are heavy. So with the belts, advantages, they're, they're lightweight. Uh, they're very power dense. So a lot of people, they see the belt and they don't think it's going to really work for their application. It's not going to be able to drive their robots. But you'll see in some pictures that a lot of teams use them now. And we've gotten pretty much all positive feedback as long as you can get them to work right. Um, and there's no lubrication, so they're clean running. So you know, we've had teams that have said that they've used the same belt drive for three years in a row with no issues because they don't have to clean anything. They don't have to change anything. They just put it on and let it run. Um, so again, disadvantages with the belt drives, they are in set lengths. So you can't break them apart and reattach them together. So we tried to get a variety of lengths out there for teams. And it's, it is hard for teams because you have to, you have to think ahead of time for using a belt drive. It's hard to just have your robot and throw a belt on there. Um, so that's another thing I'll, I'll go on later, is just some advice with using belts. Um, you do need tension in the belt. So you, that's going to be a little problem with some teams because some don't have adjustment with their pulleys. Um, so you can use idlers um, or an adjustable center distance, but you do need a way to apply some tension to the belt. Otherwise, it'll just spin on the pulleys and ratchet, and it won't work. Um, and also with chain, you can use a lot of smaller gears where with the belts, because of the tensile cord inside the belt, you have to stay above a certain diameter pulley. Otherwise, you can end up crimping the tensile cord. And once it crimps, it can just break right apart. Um, so like I said, that they are lightweight. Um, I weighed. The, the number 35 chain that comes in the kit of parts, I got one of the kits myself and went and weighed it. And then I weighed one of our HDD belts and just compared them. And the five millimeter was about 86% lighter. Um, so that's really why teams like to use the belts is because you have that weight requirement. And if you want to try to stay under it or lose some weight from last year, going with the belts is a great way to do that. So like I said, what we give out is the, uh, the HTD is the most universal tooth profile. Um, through gates, there's a 3 millimeter pitch and a 5 millimeter pitch available. Um, and you can see from the picture what that means. The pitch is just the center distance from one tooth to the next. Um, belts come in lots of their sizes, like 8 millimeter, 14, 11, 20. Um, but those are a little bit too big for the robots. And another big deal with the HTD is our pulleys are aluminum. So, um, you know, you don't want to use steel pulleys with, with your belt because that's going to kind of counteract your, your weight you're trying to save. Um, so in the kit of parts, what we give out is uh, two, two different belt lengths. We give out about a 20-inch and a 50-inch. And then the pulleys, we have about a 1-inch, 1.4, and a 2-inch pulley. Um, so that we try to give some combinations of, of belts and pulleys you can use to get speed ratios and center distances. Um, another one thing to know is the belts, they have about a 1,300 pound tensile strength for a 15 millimeter wide belt, which you know is, is far less than an inch. It's about half an inch wide. So, so you know, for people that think that they're not going to be strong, um, they are strong. And we put them against chain and looked at the ratings. and. Um, we do feel they are strong enough, so it's really just a matter of people just going in and really trying. Um, and it may turn out that it doesn't work the first or second time, but once you can really get it in there, then I think I think that it can be good. 
Got a question out there? Um, yeah, yeah. The, the five millimeter pitch is more comparable to a twenty-five chain. Um, I didn't have the number twenty-five to to weigh, but um, but yeah, I guess you would want to go to probably about a twenty-five millimeter wide belt for a thirty-five chain, which is about an inch wide. Um, and one another reason why we don't give the twenty-five millimeters out is because we don't actually make the pulleys for twenty-five millimeter wide. So it, it's hard for us to get pulleys to the teams because we would have to go custom make all of them. So it would be it'd be harder for us. So um, we can do it if people want to use wider belts. Um, but the 15 wide has seemed to work for most teams. Um, <clears throat> so quickly, just nomenclature. Um, you can see when I listed the pulleys, they're all in PD, which is pitch diameter. Um, pitch diameter, all that means is where the tensile cord rides on the on the pulley and not the outside diameter, but they are really close together, so um, the outside diameter is just a little bit, a little bit less. Uh, but you also do want to watch out for the flanges because there's the flanges on the pulleys and that can add another a little bit in, in outer diameter also. So if you're trying to save space or you have a certain space that you're trying to fit with your pulley, then make sure you're looking for the flanges also. So like I said, we give out um, belts and pulleys in the kettle parts. And also on gates.com slash first, which is our website, we also provide opportunities for teams to go order more free belts and pulleys to fit their robots. Um, so you can order up to six belts and four different pulleys on our website. So we really encourage teams to do that if you're thinking about using belts either this year or maybe even next year. Um, and, and with the, the Belts and pulleys we get on the website, they range anywhere from 11 inch length to 50 inch length for belts, and about one inch to a little more than three and a half inches for pulleys. So this is really where you can go and try to play with uh, different combinations to try to make them work. So I touched on this a little bit, but why not larger belts? Why don't we give out larger belts? Um, we would really like to, but there are a couple design criteria that I think would hinder using belts on robots. One is the, the sprocket diameters. Like I said, belts need to use a little bit larger sprocket diameters because, okay, question? Yeah, so we try to get them um, processed within one or two days and they do ship ground. So we're trying to work on that, but it can take a couple weeks to get to you. So I know that doesn't really help with teams trying to uh, go on crunch time and try to get them to work. Um, we are looking into trying to expedite parts to different teams and everything, but um, for right now it's just still ground shipping. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is we do a free order for preseason. So if teams didn't participate this year, we have um, an order form that I try to get out to all the contacts I have for teams and they can order belts during the preseason also. So that's free also. So a lot of teams, you know, you try to um, experiment with different ways to run your drivetrain and everything else. And so um, that is really the way to do it, is to try to do it in the preseason so you know how to use them. So um, if you didn't do, it, do that this year, then um, I'm going to try to get a, a sign-up sheet for, for people to give me their contact info, and then I can send out the emails as they come for what we're offering. Um, so again, one of larger belts. Um, if we go up to an eight millimeter pitch, which is the next larger size, your minimum required pulley goes up to 2.2 .2 inches. So instead of three quarters of an inch, now you have to use over a two inch pulley. And with the robots, I know you try to save a lot of space, um, and that could really hinder it. Um, another thing is the pulleys are made out of cast iron, so there goes all the weight that you're trying to save with your belts. And the bigger belts can require more tension. So with the structures and everything, it, it may be difficult to get the tension you need without the, pull, without the belt skipping. Uh, so that's why we stick with the five millimeter pitch. Um, you know, we do encourage to use larger belts if you can, but we just can't provide the pulleys and aluminum. So when you're designing them, here's a few considerations. 
just a, a bit of nomenclature. Um, you got your motor, which consists of horsepower, RPM, efficiency. Um, it may be different with the robots, just because they're they're more servo motors. But um, you get an idea of you know, your power and, and speed. Um, you got your driver pulley, which is the pulley that goes on your motor, and your driven pulley, and that's anything that's driving your equipment. So whether it's your your drivetrain, your wheels, or um, you know something that's telescoping up or spinning, that'd be the driven piece of the robot. And you got your shaft sizes. Your center distance is your distance between shafts. And then any take-up allowance you have with your motor. Um, so typically you'll either have a center distance um, allowance where you can change it, like I said, or you can use an idler on the back side and push on the back of the belt to take up the belt and put tension on it. Um, so besides just transferring motion, what bell drafts can do is um, speed ratios. So typically you have a smaller pulley on your motor, larger on your driven, then you're slowing it down by the same ratio as your pulley is. A one-to-one -one just means your whatever is on your motor, your driven pulley is going to go at the same speed. And then speed up if the pulley on your motor is bigger than the pulley on your driven equipment, then uh, you're actually speeding up that. So you can play around with different speed ratios if you like. And just quickly, um, to go through this, diameter, let's say you have a 5 on your driver or 10 on your driven, then your RPM is half now on your driven from 1,000 to 500. Your torque doubles, so by the ratio. So if you have 20 inch-pounds of torque on your motor, you can double that at 40 on your, on your uh, larger pulley on your driven. And that can be useful if you're trying to drive a wheel. You need more torque on your wheel, then you just do a little slowdown speed ratio and your torque will increase. And then your horsepower stays the same. The power always stays constant. So speed up, just reverse that. Now your diameters are 10 inches to 5 inches. Your RPMs are speeding up now from 1,000 to 2,000 RPM. Your torque decreases with a slower, with a smaller pulley. So 20 inch-pounds to 10 inch-pounds. And then again, horsepower stays the same. And then with a the one-to-one, -one, everything's the same because you're not changing ratios at all. Um, so for selecting components, you need to think of a little bit of what you want to do with your with your belt drive. Do you want to do a one-to-one -one or do you want a speed ratio? So know what you want to look for. Check your sprocket availabilities. So if you need a three-to-one reduction for your speed ratio, then you need to find one pulley that's three times bigger than the other. So it's good to look at the diameters and shaft sizes and make sure you can accommodate something like that. And then you want to look at your center distance and find a belt length that works within the center distance you're looking for. So um, new on our website, we have a calculator up there that can, uh, they can calculate all these for you. So if you know a center distance and your pulley sizes, but you're looking for the length you need, you can put that in and uh, you know, vice versa. Um, like I said, idlers, that is one, one way to take up the belt length and put tension on it. So a lot of teams I've seen have done this. Um, you can either use, either use a pulley on the inside and just run that on bearings and pull the belt out, or you can use a backside idler, which is more common. And you can just push on the back of the belt with a flat pulley or a flat roller um, to take it up. And you can see on the bottom here, that's one example of a robot that did that. Um, they just had a little flat, flat roller that took up attention. Um, so the pulleys are that we provide, they are minimum plane bore sprockets. Uh, and what that means is they just come with a small pilot hole in them, which you can, you can see in the picture here. And it's up to, up to teams to machine it out to the bore they need. So if they need something larger than the bore provided, then they're going to need some way to do that. I know most teams now have machine capability, so it shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, and, and they are aluminum, so fairly easy to machine. Um, and then also if you want to put a, a set screw or some type of key in there to help keep the pulley on shaft, then it would be the team's responsibility to do that as well. Whoops. Not sure what that means. Do this is. Okay. 
<clears throat> so here's just some examples. That's that's what a keyway looks like. It's just a little uh, square notch. It's pretty common in belt drop industry just so your pulley can lock onto the shaft. Um, and then a set screw, you can see on the left here, it's a little screw that you drill through the hub um, and tighten down on the shaft. Um, you can also go through the bottom of the teeth of the pulley. If you don't have a hub, you can actually just drill right through the, the bottom of the tooth and put a screw down there also. So a few ways to attach your shaft. Do you have any double pulleys? Um, we don't have double pulleys, no. So they're talking about like belts that can they run two belts at the same time. Yeah, no. Nope. Unfortunately, we only have uh, single pulleys for 15 millimeters. So um, applications that we've seen with belt drives, um, there have been some with uh, that actually drive the drivetrains. Um, anything that rotates, you can put a belt on. More advertisements. There we go. Um, last year with the um, the game, we saw a lot of telescoping arms that would help the arms telescope out and back in. Um, you can use them for conveyors or even tank tracks. A lot of teams have to take the belts and turn them inside out and use them as a tank track. And then also with steering assemblies. So just uh, some quick pictures. Um, I grabbed these from our Facebook site that teams have uploaded. Um, so if you're part of one of the teams, thanks. But um, there's an example of belts that are driving the, the wheels for the drivetrain. So it can be done. Um, here's a couple cool belt drives. You see one with the telescoping arm on the right. And on the left, just a variety of, of belt drives that are going to help rotate the arm up. There's another picture of it. Um, and quickly, I'll just uh, go on to our, our uh, gates.com slash first website. Um, so we put a lot of time and effort into this. We really want students to use this as a, a valuable resource to use belts. Um, this is the home page. This is what it looks like. Um, so one thing, you, this is where you submit your orders. So if you want to get free parts from us during the season, then you just want to go to the website and um, click on submit your order here, and you can choose which belts and folders you're looking for. Um, there's also technical notes and calculators, so just some literature to read up on how to design them and why you want to use belts. Um, and then also, like I said, new this year, we have the calculators that can help you calculate the speed ratios, the center distances, and the belt lengths that you need to use with your, with your robot. Um, there are instructional, instructional videos also um, that kind of just show you some tips and tricks on using the belts. And then also we have in the past, I believe three years, um, we've given out scholarships to, to high school seniors that are going into college. So um, it's a little bit different scholarship. It's not like most scholarships that, we, that people give out. Um, there's no requirements for GPA or what they're going into school or what school they're going to. Uh, we basically, we just have a, a question that it's a fun question that you need to use your brains and creativity and just answer the question how you wish. It's kind of a work problem. And you send it to us, and we have all of our uh, ex executives at Gates grade them all, and they choose the best ones. So last year we gave out six scholarships to students. Um, included with the scholarship, uh, we take you on a tour of our engineering center, um, which is pretty cool. It's in Detroit. And we, we fly you out there when we let you meet our engineers for, with Gates. And um, it's a really cool experience. They all really loved it last year. So if you're a senior um, or if you have seniors on your team, I would definitely encourage everybody to apply for the scholarship because it's really anybody can win. Um, and then just a little advice with using belts. Like I said, it's not, it's not the easiest thing in the world to take a belt drive and apply it to a robot. So try to start experimenting early. Um, Sometimes it takes the time to tweak the tension and the alignment and to make sure you have the lengths and um, pulley sizes that you need. So um, we do you know, give out the belts during the season, but um, also try to do it in the off season and just experiment a little bit. Um, a lot of teams have trouble with the tensions in their belts. There's just, they don't put enough tension on it. And when the robot runs into another robot or hits a wall, um, the belt will start slipping. And they think, okay, well, the belt's not working. Let's put a chain back on it. 
Usually if it's slipping, it just means you need more tension. So just crank down it harder. Like I said, the tensile strength is about 1,300 pounds, so you won't hurt the belt at all by putting more tension on it. You'll just, you know, what you can do is start bending your structures in your robot. So don't put too much on, but um, make sure you keep track of your tension and just make sure that if it's not working, try to put a little more on. Uh, alignment's also a big deal, so your pulley should try to be aligned as best as possible. If they're not, then that can cause problems. And um, look at the videos and read the notes on our website. Um, you know, for, for any questions you might have, I'd say to go there first. Um, and if you don't find anything, then you know, email us or go on our Facebook site and ask us questions. Um, and then also just talk to teams who use other belts. So I was at the Nationals. Yep, question? Yeah, so the question was, um, is there basically a minimum tension that you try to get to? There are minimum tensions, um, and that's in our literature. The thing is, it's, it's hard to uh, measure that because it's in a, in a pound um, measurement. It's not, it's, you know, the tension in the belt. So unless you have a way to measure what force is in that belt, it's kind of hard to, to read. Um, so tension is based directly off the power it's transmitting. So without knowing that and the speed ratios and everything, it's more of a trial and error thing to do. So if it's not slipping, then that means you have no tension on it. But like I said, as you're playing the game, you can run into situations where you, you hit another robot or you reverse really fast and there's more force than normal on it. Um, so it's, we, we can help out definitely trying to calculate what you need. Um, and my next uh, slide here is just, this is an example tool that we use in the industry to measure tension. It's a little force deflection gauge. Um, so we, we give re requirements for, for companies and people using our belts that would say, okay, well you want to push down with 20 pounds to deflect it half an inch. And when that happens, then you have good tension. Um, so we can definitely try to calculate based off motor loads and, um, you know, type of inertias and everything. Um, but it's, it is, without calculating it, it's, it's hard to give you an exact number because there are a variety of tensions for valves depending on what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Then, yeah, I was just saying I was at Nationals last year and just walking around looking at all the robots and a lot of teams seem to try to be switching the valves, but it is hard, and, and a lot of them say they just talk with other teams that have done it before and just get advice from them, see what they did. Question? Yeah. Um, it is not right now, and I'm going to try to see if we can get it on there, because I think it would be useful. Yeah, I mean, any any place we sell our, our belts, you can pick them up, and they're super cheap. It's not a... You can see it's not a very sophisticated tool. It's a little spring gauge. It's like a fish scale or something. So, um, you know, $10 at the most gets you one. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try to get those up on our free order also. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, lots of teams have been using them. I know a lot of teams that have been successful in the past have kind of switched the belts. But when I talk to them, they say it took, took a little bit of time to get us running belts, fully belts without the chain. Um, and like I said, that's a trial and error type of thing. Um, but they are dependable and they do work well as long as they're used correctly. Um, so like I said, we do try to support teams as much as we can. Um, we have a Facebook site dedicated to Roach Robotics, so I urge everyone to go and just become a fan. We give tips and um, this is where I, I put up the order form for preseason up here also. So if you were a fan, you probably got that. Um, and we have, you know, teams that upload pictures and videos and ask questions, and uh, we try to be as interactive as possible. And then also we have our engineering hotline. Um, that's where I work, so we typically answer questions to companies and, um, you know, anyone that's using belts. And, you know, if you want, you can just give us a call. The phone number's right there. It's 303-744-5800. Then you have option two, and you can talk to a live engineer, and we can send you anything we can. Um, we also have a website or a email address, ptpasupport at gates.com if you have other questions. Um, and this stuff is also all posted on our Facebook site also.
Um, so that's that's my presentation. Is there any other questions? Um, our specifications are, I think it's like a quarter of a degree of alignment, so they're, they're pretty tight, but that's kind of a worst case scenario. Um, you can easily, since these are smaller belts, there's not going to be as much tension. You can get away with a lot more. Um, just the problems you can see with misalignment is the belt pushing hard against the flange. Um, and if it pushes hard enough, it can either jump over the flange, one, it can pop the flange off, or it can just wear the belt down and end up, uh, it, I mean, I've seen some that kind of rip apart because they're so misaligned. But, um, but yeah, um, it's really just as close as possible. Our specs are a quarter degree. Yep. Uh, with the uh, design calculator online, mm -hmm. you should be able to figure out the center to center of your two axles without needing a tension. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So you have the tension, is that correct? Um, we don't have proper tension. Um, like I said, because the tension is it's variable depending on your pulley diameters and the speed it's going. Um, so without knowing that, we can't we can't give tension recommendations. Um, let's see the technical notes on on our website. There is I know there's equations that you can use to calculate it, but I don't know how useful that would be. Um, and we have design software that can do it. Also, you can download. But like I said, you just want to make sure that it's it's tight because you won't you won't hurt the belt by putting tension more tension on it. Um, yeah. Yep, up here in front. Yep, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, I forgot about that. That is one one criteria. Oh. Sorry. So yeah, the question was um do you need to use belt drives uh to be accepted for the, the scholarship? And yeah, you just have to have a belt on your robot. It doesn't have to be Anywhere specific, it can be twirling a flag if you wanted to, but um, <laughs> but we do want to see a belt on your robot, and we we asked somebody to a mentor to approve that. Yeah. Yep, up front. Uh, the belt change diameter over time, other words, when I torque one up, you know, can I tension it up and then find out that you know a month later it's not as tight as it used to be? Mm-hmm. Um, not typically. Um. It may stretch a little bit during its its run-in period, which in our industry that can be like 12 hours of runtime, um, because a lot of these belts are running fans and other things that run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. So they can stretch it a tiny bit, um, but with these, I don't see that being a, a big issue. They shouldn't stretch. I mean, a big amount at all. You should, and that's like like I said, there's been teams that have used the belts every single year and they use the same one for three years and have no problems with them. Yep. Let's see, question was deadline for scholarship. It is, um, I believe it is, I know it, it leads up to after the nationals, so I think it's uh, a week or two after nationals. Um, and so we do that because we try to advertise a lot at nationals to get Teams to apply also, so um, so yeah, it's sometime after May. Yep. yep. Uh, when you do the stretching, do you guys have a, like a rough number or percentage of how much elongation happens? Um, let's see. Like will a twelve inch become a twelve and a half inch? Oh, okay. No, no. It, it would be. Um, like a half a percent of stretch or something. I mean, yeah, I mean, no way. Yeah, half an inch. I mean, you're, you're talking 12 inch could become like a 12.05 inches, possibly. So, uh, yeah, it's not, not a lot. Yep. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, so the question was, can you get expedited shipping if you just want to go buy them? And, and yeah, um, you just go find a, a distributor of gates 
Um, we have a distributor search on our website, and you just type in the zip code, and you can find distributors in your area. And, and yeah, they can do expedited shipping, so they can do overnight um, if you need to really get some. Yep, question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the question was, um, if we have a booth booth up that, that shows the free parts that were given out or or have them on site. Um, yeah, we had a booth here last year and um, it wasn't wasn't very popular. We we kind of sat around. Um, we do go to, I mean, like I said, we go to nationals and we go to like a Denver regional. Um, but it'd be, I guess it'd be difficult to know how many we would need to bring to give out to teams. Um, so we, we haven't done it in the past. I can definitely suggest that in the future, though, if, if we think that teams were willing to, you know, or if they wanted to pick up belts here, we could try to get some out here. Okay, any other questions? Okay, great. Well, thanks a lot. Um, like I said, here's our website or Facebook. If you have any other questions, please try to contact us and we can help in any way we can.